Vega here from Serpent X Special Forces. In this video, I want to talk to you about a beginner's or how-to guide for mining with Nice Task. Nice Task is one of the primary programs that a lot of the beginners can get into and get familiar with mining before venturing on to more advanced mining operations programs or otherwise. So without further ado, I want to just dive right into it. Mining has picked up steam quite a bit recently considering the prices of First things first is you need to create an account. We're seeing my dashboard at the moment, but to create an account, you just go to nicehash.com, click on Get Started, and you will see Get Started up in the top right hand corner. Now, if you already have an account, you can just click Log In, but when you click Get Started, you're going to get over here to this register page. You're going to need an email address and a password. Here are the password requirements right down here. One lowercase character, one uppercase character, eight characters at the minimum, at least one number, and at least one special character, and obviously the password is both in the uh, top and bottom will need to match. Obviously you need to confirm your country. Uh, there's a number of various countries that you can select from this list here. I'm in the United States, and then we want to confirm that our country selection is correct and agree to terms of, of service, TOS. However, if you don't want to subscribe to their news and blog updates, you can certainly leave that unchecked, but you just hit confirm and then create an account. Once you do, you're just going to go through the basic steps of normally you will get an email. When, when you create an account on any website, you're going to get an email in which you have to verify or validate or activate or whatever it may be. Just follow the steps in that email. And then we're going to get up to the main dashboard, which is where we are now. Now, you're going to need some mining software. NiceHash has two things. Uh, a software that you can download on Windows or a nice hash OS. We're going to be focusing on Windows and I know a lot of my advanced veterans out there are going to be concerned uh, that I'm making newbie or beginner's guides but it's really picked up steam and cryptocurrency is drawing in a lot of new people so this is focusing on the Windows version of nice hash miner. You can, once you're in your main dashboard, click on mining and then over here in the top right here download miner or add async now we need nice hash miner for windows and we can download it now what I like to do typically is go straight to the github and how I do that is if I go to Google and I type in nice hash miner github it will be the first result but you always want to get it through official sources so if you don't feel comfortable doing that just go ahead and go through going to give you a wallet address that you're going to need. Once you select your miner, you're going to want to copy that address and make sure that you plug that in or hang on to it because you're definitely going to need that. Now typically you can download the installer, but I like to install or download the zip folder and then extract that to a directory or hard drive of my choosing. You can quite frankly even put this on a USB drive if you're going to be moving from machine to machine to copy and paste it onto that machine or just let it run off the hard drive or USB drive. So we're going to click this. I use the default program WinBar. You might use 7-Zip or what have you, but you just want to extract it to a directory that you're comfortable with, your downloads, your documents, whatever it might be. Once that's downloaded, let me go ahead and pull it up here. These are the files that you're going to see here. Now, this is just the basic setup, and it's got a lot more to do. So what I like to do, though, on Windows is I like to right-click and run as administrator. This will give us a couple of features, specifically on NVIDIA GPUs, that we wouldn't have access to if we did not run as administrator. So I always like to run as administrator. Obviously, if you're not the admin of your computer, then you might have to do something else or reach out to your system administrator. But we got to accept the terms of service with everything we do, unfortunately, in this day and age choose the language that we're most comfortable with and then here we are where we're going to have to either enter in our Bitcoin address manually. Now remember that address I was telling you about? The one that we were supposed to copy? You can do that or if you have the mobile application you can scan it in. In the mobile application um, you see a little QR code icon, click it and then you can actually scan and log in or you can log in normally so with the email and password that you created you can also do that in this case we're just going to enter our address manually now that's going to start installing and doing everything we need we can also 
add additional mining programs. So it's going to install the default applications, but there's additional plugins that we can also install. There's dark mode, there's light mode, there's a number of things that we're going to go through in the settings in just a moment. Nine times out of ten, when you start to install this program on a brand new computer or a brand new Windows installation, your antivirus program or Windows Defender or Windows Security is going to block it. We want to prevent that. Now to prevent that, what we can do is we can see here that it's already given us a notification. We want to hit allow on device. Now obviously I can understand what I can be a little bit concerning. You can see I got a number of them here right in front of me. Uh, I trust NiceHash, so therefore I'm going to allow and restore most of everything that it blocked. Now you may not have this huge list like I do uh, because it's not just nice hash. I also have various other programs on here, various other miners, stuff like that. But you just want to make sure that you allow nice hash to be able to do its thing. Also you can go down to virus threat protection settings, click manage, scroll down and then add or remove exclusions. Now you can add and what I would recommend is either file or folder, go to folder, and then go to wherever you installed or have your main NiceHash folder. Now before we get started, every program or every miner is probably going to want to run a benchmark of some type. NiceHash has it all built in, nice and neat for us. But first, let's go to settings. First thing I want to do is change it from light mode to dark mode. That's going to want to reset the program. Let that reset. And then I'm going to go through some more options with you. So we got our address. We can give it a different name, whatever you want. So let's say uh, NVIDIA 1. If I know how to spell NVIDIA right. Okay. We can choose our time unit. We can add in our electrical cost, whatever it may be. 10 cent per kilowatt, sorry. Uh, we will also want to make sure our server is correct. Now, 9 times out of 10, it's going to default to Europe, Amsterdam, but I'm located here in the U.S., but then we also have China, Japan, India, Brazil. So choose what's right or the closest for your location. Once you're done with the general section, getting everything set up, go over to Advanced, and a lot of people like to turn on Auto Start Mining if this rig or machine that we were on was dedicated just to mining. It wasn't being used by anybody else, like my wife or my children or anything like that. And what we could do is we could actually have it start up, run on startup, and then auto start mining. And what would happen is when the computer reboots, power outage, or whatever, it will automatically reboot um, if you have it set up hardware wise, because you also have to set that up within your UE UEFI if you wanted to do that to uh, you know power on after it loses power. But just just say every time we restart the system, we want it to start mining, just turn on these two options. If you don't want that, you want to manually control it, then leave it the way it is, at stock. I like to also choose a couple other options here. When we scroll down, there's options for run script when CUDA GPU is lost. What this means is NiceHash Miner will run on GPU loss batch, it's a batch file, uh, when it detects that one GPU has been lost or anything like that, start the whole system. I also like to turn on NVIDIA P0 state, which will increase the performance of the GPU or keep it in this P0 state throughout most of its mining. Now this is going to require a restart, so let's go ahead and do that. Then we just got to get the benchmark going. And once we get the benchmark going, we're going to be able to utilize nice hash miner the way we want to. First, just check out plugins. You can see all the standard plugins here. We can even update them. But we can also install other miners. Like, for example, I like to use, for NVIDIA, T-Rex miner. We have to accept terms there. I also like to use TT miner. And Mini Z is, is good, but if you're, if you're unsure which miner to get, just install all of them and let the benchmark determine what is the best one. Because, you know, for example, T-Rex Miner right now, as the time of filming, is actually performing better than Phoenix Miner when it comes to mining Ethereum. I get just a little extra hash rate with the new T-Rex Miner compared to Phoenix Miner. But if we install all the plugins that we want, then go over to Dashboard. When I hit Start Mining, instead of immediately mining, it's going to start to benchmark all the various algorithms. 
Now, overclocking your GPU is very important, but every GPU is different. And I can't tell you use this exact setting for this exact GPU. However, there are websites out there, including articles or blogs or whatever, that actually provide us information about you know what overclocks we should have set. For example, on Reddit, I have the 3060 Ti, the 3080, so on and so forth. So maybe check out some of those videos and the performance results that I got testing out those GPUs, as well as any of the articles that I linked. But if you come over to What's a Mine or a various website, there's plenty of good calculators out there, and you mouse over the GPU you might have, you can see here it says using plus 125 on the core, plus 500 on the middle, with a TPP set of 75%. Now we actually have a 3080 in the system, and it's saying using 70 to 80 percent TDP unverified. So they're still testing it. I already have those numbers set up in my system, and I'll tell you what they are right now. So with the Gigabyte Gaming OC or Eagle, the best setting that I found was 70 percent TDP or power limit, minus 200 on the core, plus 1200 on the map. Again, each GPU is different. So what you can do is you can tune slightly by dropping the power limit to about 80% and then reducing the core or upping the core depending on the algorithm because that's the next hard thing. And this is just focusing on the beginning aspects of starting to mine. Some algorithms are core intensive and some are memory intensive. So you're going to have to fine tune your hardware to meet the criteria that you're trying to get. Right now we're trying to focus on Ethereum which is why I have minus 200 so now, if we hit start mining, that's going to go through a benchmark, which I'm not going to do because we're recording. Once it goes through everything, we'll be able to start mining. That's going to accumulate Bitcoin. What it's going to do is going to mine various coins that are profitable. Right now, the most profitable cryptocurrency to mine, if you can guess it, is Ethereum. As we mine Ethereum, other people are out there paying miners to mine to a specific pool, to a specific address on their behalf, and we get paid out for that. So you're going to start to see your wallet accumulate here. Right now it says zero dollars, but when we click on that wallet, we can actually withdraw those funds to a cold storage wallet, hardware wallet, a Coinbase wallet, whatever you would like. But once you're set up, once your benchmark's all done, you want to fine tune your system to kind of be in the middle. And what I mean by that is say my Nvidia mix rig that's not currently visible is kind of set, you know, like plus 450, 550 on the mem, uh, you know, plus a 120, 125 on the core for most of my GPUs, even though they might be mining Ethereum. And the reason I have it like that is because it, if it's auto switching between Kapow, uh, Cockrocycle, Ethereum, Dagger, whatever, it's in this middle ground to where it can flip, no problems. Because sometimes if you have your overclocks too high or too low, and it switches to a much more core intensive algorithm when it was on a memory intensive, it can cause issues. This is gonna require a deeper dive and more questions that you might have. Feel free to leave them in the comments below. But that's gonna be pretty much it for getting started. We got nice hash downloaded, we created an account, we entered our Bitcoin address, we set up our worker name, we chose our server location, we changed any advanced settings that we wanted to, whether we wanted to run on startup and start mining automatically every time the system restarted or reboot. Uh, another good thing, by the way, that you can set up is... Start mining when idle. What this will do is if, say for example, you move the mouse and you want to start doing some browsing, maybe order a pizza, it will stop mining. If you move the mouse and open up a game, it will stop mining. Anytime the system is idle, it will automatically mine for you. That would be a good option if this was your main system and you like gaming and doing, using it as a regular, but wanted to mine during downtime. This option is very good, so you may want to check that. But besides that, the settings that you have in here, the advanced scripting that you'll see for NVIDIA is not available for AMD. You can check that, get a little bit extra performance, check your plugins, install the miners that you want or all of them if you're not sure. Occasionally there will be an update 
uh, which will be notified up here in this little blue dot. Just make sure you update your plugins and continue to mine. Get into the game, start accumulating Bitcoin, and good luck to you. Because I don't believe cryptocurrency is going anywhere anytime soon. And whether it's Bitcoin, Ethereum, or any of the top cryptocurrencies, I believe it's going to be here to stay for a while. I know there's a lot of them out there. I know there's a lot of projects and coins that you can support and you can mine directly. And NiceHash doesn't support every single one of them. But NiceHash is the easiest way to get in besides Awesome Miner, which will be upcoming in another video. So stay tuned for that. Do me a favor, hit the like button on the way out. Subscribe for more content like this. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care and have a great day. Thank <laughs> you.